So, what I come to talk to you about is really the development of our wheat populations, some of the background on the science, and really up to where we are now. Our drivers were about feeding ourselves, um, were about climate change, energy use on farms, uh, lots of agricultural and general biodiversity, and um, who controls the system, the farmer or others. Um, and where we are is that we have an industrialised system with a one size fits all, and actually generally with monocultures. So, monocultures aren't necessarily bad, they're quite good for the farmer, there's ease of planting, harvesting, marketing, mechanisation, these sort of things, um, and there is often a uh, familiarity with the needs of those specific varieties. For the corporations, they can breed new varieties, uh, they know what the inputs are going to be, um, they can have machinery to increase the scale, um, and there's processing and marketing. But actually, what that also does is reduces lock-ins. So there's a loss of diversity, there may only be two or three varieties. Uh, the way that the uh, agrochemicals are applied means that we're reducing weeds, pests, diseases, which is a good thing, but also could be negative. Um, increasing fuel, um, but also there are things like pollution and negative impacts of, on the ecosystems. But also, the farmer loses control. So, we went to sort of diversity, and we know with diversity that actually with diversity we get stability, and also with diversity we get an increase in productivity. What we wanted to then do is look at how do we do that artificially. So we decided that we were going to um, look at producing a diversity within the crop. So this isn't a mixture, this is, um, as we said, a crowd or a population. And what this does, it has sort of four positives. So you can have different genetic level, but also physical level uh, differences, and that increases the capacity of your crop. Because um, these actually then can complement. If you've got a one that actually likes it being quite droughty, that will perform quite well. Or if it's actually something that needs a bit more with the disease, that can benefit from that, that does quite well. And also they will then compensate each other. So actually if you have a very dry year, the dry one looks really well. Or a very damp year, the one that can deal with wetness, that works well. Um, and also we know because this is a population, uh, a crowd, that actually it can change over time. You've got lots of genes in there rather than a smaller amount which you get in a variety. However, there is a negative, which is I guess the sort of, the, the, the other side of complementation is about competition. They can compete with each other. But just give you a little example of what, how these populations might work and then I'll just show you how we did it. So this is working as agroforestry, our trials in 2012. This was put in in the, August, in the October 16th. So we have the population at the front, and then we have alchemy, which was a controlled single variety at the back. Two weeks later, we had a bit of rain, we couldn't get on, we put the new variety, we, we had to wait to put the second round of trials in. And actually what then happened was that actually alchemy, which is a very small genetic base, failed to establish, where the population had a much wider genetic base established. So this gives you this sort of um, being able to deal with a number of different environments. So we wanted to develop these, these populations. So um, what we did was we had, uh, we started in 2001-2, and what we did was cross 20 different varieties, all with each other, some of them old ones, some of them new ones, some with good quality, some from good yield. And we then bogged up those seeds, and we had a very genetically diverse crowd. We call it population, but it's like you here. It's not a mixture of varieties, it's a mixture of the genetics. So, um, so we're now a decade on, and the situation we have now is that we've done a lot of tests on these. Uh, it's been around, uh, actually it's been around Europe, this population, a cycling population. It's been on a number of your farms, uh, and it's on this farm. Um, and what we found is actually the yield within the population, we have a greater stability than the, um, the parents. Uh, the protein content and hardness were significantly uh, increased from the parents. This is in organic systems. Um, baking quality was good, and uh, they're as nutritious as the parents, and also it's suitable for animal feed. And then on genetic level, we know that actually um, all the genes basically stay there. You can, put, you can push it genetically, so you either put through mass selection, either on height or grain size or grain colour, and we can shift it a little bit, but it bounces back. Um, and actually, even if they go through the conditions we've had in the UK, um, this genetic diversity is maintained. We did put it through a um, Hungarian winter, which was a real genetic bottleneck, and we lost some of the genetics there. But actually, with the UK conditions, um, it's there. So you have this capacity to uh, cope with the changing environment. 
Um, and what we knew is that actually the farmers wanted to buy it. The farmers that had it on their farm liked it and they saw it as a positive. However, we were in a situation where marketing the seed was illegal because it doesn't meet the seed regulations. We know it meets quality, there's no problem on that. Seed health, of course we want to meet it that. But actually, the other thing, the DUS, is distinct, stable and uniform. Um, but it clearly isn't that. We don't want it to be distinct, stable and uniform because actually that's, we want that plasticity for it to be able to move. And, and actually with the uh, value for cultivation and use, that really is only about interpretation of the regulation. So, as we were starting this in 2001-2, we worked with the policy makers, with DEFRA, with I think FERA or whatever it now is, went through about four names in this period. But actually, they understood what we wanted to do. They needed, they knew that we had to change regulations, we had to change the system in Europe. Um, and we made a case for change. And then this became a reality March last year. So what we have is what is called a temporary marketing experiment. It runs until December 2018. We need to put a lot of evidence together on this. But what it allows us to do is actually market um, certain grains, and particularly uh, oat, uh, wheat, maize, and barley. We have decided that we are going to market the wheat population, and it's being bulked up for the first uh, marketing this autumn. You'll see it on the trial today. And actually, this is the first public announcement of our very stunning name. <laughs> it's going to be called ORC Wakeland's Population. And I just need to say thank you for Martin, who I assume is here. This is really Martin's baby. He started this many years before um, we actually started this specific project. Um, but this is now a, his reality and our reality. Thank you.